Welcome back to Granberry TV, everybody. It's time for our weekly sheriff's report. How are you doing? Doing good. How are you? I'm good. How have uh, things been? Oh, always busy. Always got plenty to do. Lots uh, going on. Yep. Went from the tornado to back to regular business mm -hmm. again. So then business is booming, unfortunately. Well, and it is the summertime, too. Kids are out of school. We got people here visiting. I know the 4th of July weekend's coming up on us really quick. So it's, it's going to be busy, right? With with all the activities going on. Yeah, I believe it's going to be really, really busy. So, um, and yeah, it's that time of the year anyway, like you mm -hmm. say, that the kids um, are already, it's very, hadn't been in their vacation for very long, but they're already getting bored and um, <laughs> some of them are getting, are up to no good. So. Yeah. Well, let's hear what you uh, brought to talk about today. Well, I don't have Captain East with me today and that's because he stayed out late last night and so mm -hmm. I don't have this typed up, but um, got some information I wanted to bring out today. We've had a, a pretty long in-depth investigation going on, drug investigation, and um, last night, yesterday afternoon actually, <clears throat> is when a lot of this started, we shut down the checkered flag in Crescent. Mm -hmm. So they're not open for business right now. That's at 9505 uh, East 377 up there. Mm -hmm. And um, we shut them down for selling K2. Oh, wow. So, They've been doing this for a while, and, and we got information about it, and so um, everything came together, and we decided it was time we better do something about it. So yes, that's a, a major deal. Um, lots of illegal drugs have been seized. Lots of money have been seized. Um, mm -hmm. Vehicle, um, and probably more to follow. So yeah, uh, this was a, a big, big deal for for Hood County. We. Marijuana is one thing, and meth is bad, um, but the K2, ever since that started coming out in the last few years, that um, it affects everybody a little different. And we've had kids in Hood County that have been paralyzed, mm -hmm. um, had seizures, just had a lot of things going on with them. It doesn't just, uh, like talking about the marijuana, it gives them the munchies and mellows right. them out. Well, this affects people, just so many different people in so many different ways, and it's, and it's been a lot of situations where it's bad. Mm -hmm. It's really bad physically, and um, we just, that's been a, one of my priorities along with the, the drugs in general is, is getting, getting this K2 out of here, and um, the city of Granbury was the first one to, with a lot of other cities, to ban uh, the K2, the sales of K2, and then finally, and DEA had banned it nationwide, and then the state finally got got it done when they went to the legislation two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, so things have come a long ways, but, yeah. but it's still out there. We need to uh, we need to get rid of it. And mm -hmm. So For we're sure. fighting it, fighting it all the time. But this was a, a good deal last night to shut them down. Awesome. Well, it's great to. I mean, it's not good to hear that it's out there still, but it's great to hear that you guys are on top of it and getting off the streets and taking care of it. So. Yep. And then with other news, we had a, a family violence charge filed. On um, June 11th, the uh, Sheriff's Office investigators filed a second charge of assault family violence on previous convictions, felony three, and the bond was set at $20,000 on Dustin Casey Kincaid. He's 24 years old and he is currently in jail. Mm -hmm. And the charge stemmed from an incident on May 17th, around 11 a.m., where Kincaid had assaulted his 28-year-old sister by punching her in the face during an argument. Wow. So the victim was not seriously injured in the assault, but it's just one thing in a string of many. So mm -hmm. Kincaid fled the scene before deputies arrived. Kincaid later returned and was arrested in, in, on the second assault charge with the same victim approximately five hours later. So he's in my jail and he's probably not going anywhere for a while. We had a man arrested for interfering with a 911 call on the, the 10th of June around 2 a.m. Sheriff's deputies arrested Angel Isaiah Hernandez, 21 years old, for interfering with an emergency call with previous convictions. State jail felony and bond was $5,000 and criminal trespass. Class A misdemeanor and bond was 2,500 at the 3200 block of Oak Trail Drive. The charge stemmed from a disturbance on um, April 11th where Hernandez was previously issued a criminal trespass warning at the 2800 block of Forest Park Drive. 
During the disturbance, Hernandez grabbed the victim's phone to prevent them from calling 911. Hernandez fled the scene before deputies arrived, but um, he was caught, and so he is currently in jail on, on both the warrants. So these things, a lot of times, the, they'll keep doing misdemeanor crimes over and over and over again, but then under the law, they can be charged with the previous convictions, and that starts adding up, and it yeah. bumps them into that felony range. So um, he's in a whole heap of trouble. So. His, his his life just keeps spiraling downward, I guess. To say. Yeah. Then we had a woman that was selling drugs to an undercover officer. You know, my guys, they're out there. I got a great team that you never know where they're going to be and what mm -hmm. what they're going to be up to, but they're working hard to fight the the, the war on drugs. It and sounds like a, like they're really good. I mean, it seems like every oh, every week that goes by, you have at least one story of. Uh, Somebody selling to your undercover officers, you know, you would think that they would figure it out by now, <laughs> but they they seem pretty good if they haven't noticed it yet. So well, they're they're good at what they do, and and, um, and these other people, they used to have the TV commercials on where drugs kill brain cells. Mm -hmm. uh, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, they they can make those deals. So on the on June seventh, around six p.m. the narcotics unit was conducting a drug investigation and arrested Carla Jean Head, 36 years old, for manufacturing and delivery of a controlled substance over a gram and under four grams, and that's felony two. And bond was set at $20,000 at 3900 block of Highway 377 East. Head sold approximately 1.3 grams of meth to undercover officers during the drug investigation, and she's still in, in jail, and, and she's been in my jail before, so. Mm -hmm. She's not new to any of this, and, and so I, I'm amazed at the frequent flyers, and, yeah. and they do it over and over. And well, they just love your hotel so much. Well, that, that could be. You know, I was told again the other day that uh, my jail is the, serves some of the best food there is around, and mm -hmm. um, the way I look at it, if the trustees are the ones that cook the and prepare all the meals. Right. I've got a cook that's in charge that she works for me and so she makes sure that they have all the supplies and everything's working mm -hmm. good and running good um, but we allow some of the some of the people that um, do well don't cause trouble that we allow them to become trustees right. inside the jail so we have a good group that that works in the in the kitchen mm -hmm. and uh, people brag about quality of food that they get served up here at the <laughs> jail, so, um, you know, that, that, that's good, I guess, in some ways, because if they're fat and happy, then they sleep a lot more and they don't cause any trouble, and, <laughs> and I've heard of other jails that they give them, a, you know, like a bologna sandwich and a cup of water, and that's it, yeah. and, um, and really so doing some of that stuff is not much cheaper than doing it right, and so... Mm -hmm. um, if we can keep them happier, then I've got less troubles in the jail. And, and yeah. that's when I came in as sheriff four and a half years ago, people said, oh, one of my biggest headaches was going to be that jail. And there was a lot of issues in the jail then, and I took over and we straightened them up, and that's the least of my problems. <laughs> uh, people are happy to be there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't sound right, but yeah, they, they're happy to be there, and uh, people have said that, you know, they, they have a better life in that jail than they did before they got in, so. Wow. <laughs> you know, three meals a day, and they get TV to watch, and air conditioned, and heated, and uh, they're not out on the streets. So, <laughs> unfortunately, you know, we have a lot of, not a lot, but we have a few um, people that are homeless in Hood County, and mm -hmm. and seem like sometimes they end up in my jail, and, mm -hmm. and they don't want to leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, well, I guess then uh, it's time for our Crime Stoppers Crime of the Week. Yep, and we always have seem to have crimes that we need help with, and, and so here's another one. Crime Stoppers needs information on a car burglary that occurred the night of June 6th at a residence on Cliffview Court. The victim reported stolen a black wallet containing identifying information, a black Kindle Fire, a blue video camera, a 300 Canon camera, a kid's baseball glove and helmet with a total value of $1,175. 
Anyone with information on this theft can call Crime Stoppers at 817-573-TIPS or go online to hoodcountycrimestoppers.com or you can call, you can send your tip in a text message to 274637 to tip 129. You will remain anonymous and if your tip leads to arrest you could receive up to a $1,000 cash reward. Now this kind of goes back to what we've talked about numerous times about the when you leave your car, lock it, hide the stuff, that kind of thing, right? Oh yeah. So that's definitely something to think about going into the holidays, into 4th of July, into the summer with lots of people out and doing things and that kind of thing, right? Yeah, when you, when you go out shopping, um, that's one thing if you go to the mall and you're going from store to store to store, but try to you know, you make trips back to your vehicle just because you can't carry it all, and, um, but cover it up, try not to leave it out in the open because as people walk by, as the bad guys walk by through the parking lots, and that's what they're looking for. They're looking for something easy, something good, um, so make sure those cars are locked up, make sure things are covered up. Um, that's one thing I've found here over the years recently is the bad guys are lazier, so if they got to work at it and bust out a window and draw attention to themselves, they're not going to do it. If the <laughs> car is unlocked yeah. and, and they can see it, that'll make them want to get in there that much more. Then if it's easy to get to and they can see it, they're going to go after it. So if they don't see it and it's locked up, then they'll just keep on walking. So. Uh, you know, be careful of that, and especially at your homes. With, uh, and that's what happened in this case. That even if it's at your home, unfortunately, you need to lock the vehicles up and, and don't leave those belongings out there in the in the vehicles. Yeah. Um, and if you have to leave them out there for whatever reason, cover them up. Don't just leave them laying on the seat or on the console someplace that they can be easily seen. And make sure those vehicles are locked up. So Definitely. bring them in if you can, lock them up in, in your home. So Definitely. it's not like it was 30, 40 years ago when you could leave cars and homes and everything unlocked. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, don't, give, don't give them the opportunity. Don't yeah. make yourself an easy victim. So keep stuff covered up, keep stuff locked up, and everybody will be happy. Definitely. I know if that was me, I would hate to lose my camera and my Kindle. I, would, I don't know what I would do without those two. Those are... Two of my favorite little pieces of technology. So, <laughs> yeah. well, hopefully, uh, you guys catch whoever did it. Maybe return the stuff. Whatever um, you can do, whatever people can help out with, that would be great. Hopefully, that happens. And uh, we thank you so much for coming in and talking to us and letting us know what's going on. And um, I'm sure we'll talk to you next week. And I'm sure you'll have even more stories for us. Oh yeah, we'll be back. And thank you for allowing me to come up and do this. Definitely. We need to get the information out to the citizens so they know what's going on and how they can protect themselves and um, everybody's always interested in what's going on oh, yeah. out there so awesome well thank you and uh, have a good weekend you too thanks